Hello and welcome to In The Hype Loop. My name is Blake. Really exciting news um, with the results of the Hyperloop studies from the Mid-Ohio Regional Planning Commission is finally released to the public. Um, a lot of local press about this. Um, really excited because this all stemmed from the Hyperloop One Global Challenge um, proposal for this Midwest Connect. This is the actual PDF uh, that was submitted to Hyperloop One. Um, and it tells a lot of interesting information and research on what modes of transportation are currently there, how might Hyperloop um, uh, change the whole region, um, what are the major cities, what is the major infrastructure that's currently there. So I'd highly recommend um, you take a look. And it really gets into policy and uh, other aspects of Hyperloop that you wouldn't normally think. Um, so fast forward, um, they kicked off a formal study a couple years ago. Um, it's cost about $2.5 million, um, looking at the benefits of Hyperloop um, in this corridor. Um, they also uh, released this website, the Hyperloop Midwest Connect Initiative, um, that kind of uh, was the overarching organization that uh, put together this feasibility study, and the feasibility study was the Rapid Speed Transport Initiative. Um, notice how it doesn't say Hyperloop, but it was a look at um, initiatives built upon ongoing development for stronger connections with neighboring regions, um, rail, passenger rail, and Hyperloop. Um, phase one was the Hyperloop Feasibility Study. Uh, Midwest Connect um, explores potential routes between Columbus to Pittsburgh and Chicago. Um, the other is another uh, alternative study um, that looks at uh, connecting Chicago, Fort Wayne, Lima, Marysville, Columbus, and Pittsburgh. Um, so it's just really interesting um, and the timeline uh, that it would be completed in the summer, well it's now October so that's great. Um, and this corresponded perfectly with Virgin Hyperloop One Roadshow, um, sparking interest uh, from Ohio uh, communities and uh, the CEO of Virgin Hyperloop One, Jay Walder, uh, and his team was there. Um, I'd highly recommend you check out this video of the highlights um, and STEM related activities which was really nice to see um, that Virgin Hyperloop One uh, wanted to put together. Um, so yeah, just really interesting good um, interviews. Um, from the media, and then the Hyperloop One pod was in front of the State House. Um, so, uh, also universities really uh, touted um, uh, different things, and we've seen you know um, a lot of buzz in the past with uh, really interesting um, you know architecture firms wanting to possibly develop uh, Hyperloop stations. Um, and we've also had media recently from Virgin saying, what will the Hyperloop look like in India? Um, and, you know, really, you know, I don't see anybody there or any cities. It's a Hyperloop station in the middle of nowhere, which is interesting. Um, and, uh, yeah, so all this kind of came to a head um, yesterday. And these are other documents about how much the study uh, cost um, and, you know, how it was conducted um, and um, I'd highly recommend you check out these other documents. Um, but the actual um, uh, report was brought in front of the Dublin City Council um, yesterday. It starts at about minute 41, and let's just kind of give a listen. Talk to us a little bit about uh, rapid speed transportation initiatives, and this includes Hyperloop, which we have had multiple discussions with, and I too believe, believe it will be uh, rail. Uh, possibilities and where they are in um, working through that. I see we have Neil with us. We, we have got the, we've got the whole ace mayor. I'm Thea Walsh. I'm the transportation director with the Mid-Ohio Regional Planning Commission. Um, I'm here uh, tonight to share with you, um, uh, Dina too, uh, to share with you the Rapid Speed Transportation Initiative up the update. And I couldn't think of a more fitting place to do that, but where yesterday meets tomorrow. So <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Um, so a little background on the project. Um, um, we're just going to skip ahead. Particularly Central Ohio. So for the Hyperloop feasibility, we wanted to look at um, identifying routes. First of all, is it feasible? 
because in order for it to be feasible, it has to be able to attain uh, optimal speeds. And what we found to be optimal speeds would have to be above 450 miles an hour or higher. So we needed to look at these corridors and look at the possibilities uh -huh. of different types of right of way with that in mind. Is it possible to do it on this particular route and still attain those speeds to make it worthwhile? right away so the orange highlights on the screen show you the portions that are rail right of way shared with the hyperloop route and the blue would be all uh, new right away that would need to be acquired some of it does has the possibility of going on existing roadways so you know we this is just again a very high level study we look at feasibility of route the actual uh, detailed design and engineering would would really hone in on right of way type of needs but this is just to give you the big picture of what those two potential routes could look like So one of the questions that I've been asked by other, by the public is, you know, what, why another travel alternative? Uh, to those of us in transportation, we know these, we can recite them in our sleep. Uh, it is a safety thing, first and foremost. You know, we do have quite a lot of casualties and injuries on the roadways. So we're just going to fast forward. Work for the passenger rail project. So our task was to take what they had already done and do it and, and do our part from Lima. So key findings, oh, feasibility. Um, whoops. Um, once fully operational over 30 years, um, 30 billion in overall economic, uh, 300 billion in overall economic benefits, 19 billion in what are direct transportation benefits over 30 years. Um, but you have to have uh, optimal speed of about 500 miles an hour to make this work. Um, and you will be dealing with existing and new right-of-way, as well as some tunneling. Um, we're just going to continue on. savings alone. And state agencies, Next like the steps. DOTs, uh, to look at things like travel demand modeling a little bit to understand the, the mode better. And also on the technology side, you know, tapping into the, to, to all those resources that Central Ohio has in the, in the research and development industry. So we are going to be assisting in collaborating and putting those together uh, with Virgin Hyperloop One and other stakeholders in the region and across the corridor. We also, uh, as you can imagine, there is no regulatory framework for this. So if we wanted to construct something tomorrow, we would have a little bit of a roadblock with the federal agencies. So we have been working with ODOT, uh, with FHWA, and we are keeping uh, monitoring developments at the, at, at, in Washington to look for opportunities to, to work on that uh, regulatory framework along with. So this is all really fascinating, and I highly recommend uh, you take a look at the full um, video here. Um, we might come back and look at it too um, in a future date when we can when have enough, when we have enough time to take notes. So um, stay in the hyperloop. Uh, let us know what you think about this corridor. Um, it's really fascinating that we're starting to see actual um, feasibility studies be published and talked about in city council. Um, and congratulations, um, Mid Ohio Regional Transportation, <laughs> um, uh, for. Uh, doing this study and completing it um, and being very public and open about it. Um, so uh, stay in the Hyperloop and um, have a good week.